Precious metal scams can be devastating, of course, because of the high value nature of the things that you're buying. And it's happened, unfortunately. Somebody lost a lot of money on eBay buying a gold coin. And also, scammers are trying to impersonate even myself, passing off this beautiful sphere as their own. But it's okay, we caught this one red-handed. And hopefully now, spreading the word about scams and scammers for precious metals, we can help protect more of the community from losing money. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now today I want to talk about scammers, and scammers are the plague of various different industries, but of course with precious metals it's even more accentuated by the inherent value of the items that we deal with. And I've got two real world examples, one where somebody bought something on eBay and is to this day out of pocket on that purchase, it was fake. And I've also got another example where somebody was trying to pass off this sphere as made by themselves to try and scam somebody. And they even tried to involve me in that scam. So some really interesting things to go through and I hope we get some learning from this. And I know the original poster of the eBay issue, the sort of buyer that's lost money here, he's publicly posted all about this and I think he's learned a lot and I hope that a lot of you out there will learn something too. So please feel free to comment and share your thoughts and experiences on this topic down in the comment section below. It's really great to hear what you have to say and uh, stay safe out there is what I'll say straight up off the bat. So let's get started with the eBay one because this is the one that really shocks me the most to be quite frank. Um, now for those that maybe are not aware, eBay is and can be an okay place to buy gold and silver. If you're buying from a trusted seller an established business on there, generally speaking, you're pretty safe. And there's the eBay buyer protection, which a lot of people take as ironclad that you will always be safe as a buyer. But where you stray from the established dealers, the established sellers, that's when you get yourself in trouble. And that's what this particular person did. They, I think, were scouring the various different auctions that were ending for gold coins. And they saw a US gold eagle. And the auction, I think, finished at around 300 pounds from what I understand and his bid was the winning bid. And straight off the bat, that's gonna tell me and probably 99.9% .9 of all of you out there that something's not right. And that's the first clue that you can always get from any eBay item listing an auction. If it's too good to be true, if somebody's selling an ounce of gold and it's at auction for 300 pounds, something's wrong. There's gonna be something wrong with it. And indeed, when you go and look at the uh, images on this particular auction. And by the way, there are links down below to the Silver Forums thread where this has been shared in its entirety and you can see all of the information like the photos. But the photos are blurry. So first one here, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Second point, examine the photos of the coin in question. Are they good quality? Can you really see what it is you're looking to buy? And then reference that with a real specimen. If you've got one in your possession, even better. If not, then just go and Google search what real coins look like. And a quick Google search, quite frankly, even with the blurry photos of this seller's listing, will indicate that it is a fake. Now the seller has listed it in gold and listed it in, you know, in basically good faith that it is real gold. Of course, they're not, it's a complete scam. And the buyer has bought it thinking, well, worst case scenario, I'll send it back and I'll get a refund because that's eBay buyer protection. So when the gold coin, the gold coin arrived, it was very obvious to the buyer that it was fake. So they contacted the seller and the seller said, well, that's your own fault. You, you know, should have looked at the listing closely and seen that it was not real. So the buyer then, you know, that's kind of the standard response you get from a lot of these, uh, these scammers on eBay. They will just chance it, the one in 10 or one in 100 people that might just go, oh, well, I've made a mistake, haven't I? Uh, it's all me, it's my fault. They'll then walk away with the money. But this particular buyer knew at least that they could potentially get their money back through eBay money back guarantee. So they opened a case with eBay. And from what I'm understanding, it was referred through to PayPal. So I believe this person must have paid with PayPal. PayPal started the uh, you know sort of returns process and instructed the uh, buyer to send the item back to the seller and upload tracking information. 
Now straight off the bat, this is where the buyer made the biggest mistake and they sent it through just regular first class sign for delivery. They didn't send it special delivery. So for those that don't know in the UK, special delivery is like registered. It's properly secure. It will get there. And if it doesn't get there, even precious metals, even high value items above 50 pounds are insured. And lo and behold, of course, this didn't return to the seller. It's lost, it's completely gone within the ether. The tracking has gone for a month now without showing any movement. So now the seller or the, or the buyer contacts PayPal and eBay saying, but hey, look, it's, it's fake. And they go, no, but you've lost it. So he initiates a claim with Royal Mail, which of course doesn't get anywhere because it's not a real uh, coin. So the 300 pounds that he's paid for the item can't be refunded by the post office and it can't be refunded by PayPal or eBay. And ultimately, the nuts and bolts of it is that the case has now been closed in the seller's favour because, of course, the item has never been returned. And the negative feedback that was left for this seller has disappeared because, of course, the uh, case was found in their favour. It's just, it's staggering. And whilst I don't want to, you know, levy formal accusations towards PayPal and eBay, there needs to be more done by eBay and PayPal to protect their buyers. And I know they've got the very good, robust buyer protection, but... The last update that we had from the seller was that they managed to get a goodwill payment out of PayPal because I think even PayPal knew that what had happened wasn't right. Who buys a one ounce gold coin? Who sells a one ounce gold coin for 300 pounds? Nobody does, it's fake, it's obviously fake. This guy's been taken for a ride. And of course, the whole worst thing about this is that the seller is living life great with 300 pounds from this buyer and he's out of pocket and that's not good. So what can we learn from that particular situation? And I know the seller, sorry, the buyer, beg your pardon, has learned a lot and he's quite chipper about it. You know, he, can, he has definitely got some anger within him for uh, this, this situation. So the first tip, as I said there, is just do your research. Make sure you know what you're getting and who you're getting it from. Research the company. If you're buying on eBay, if it's too good to be true, don't buy it. And quite frankly, if you're going to be buying things like one ounce gold coins, even if it's going to cost you a couple of pounds more to buy it from a real dealer in person or online on their own website with their own protections and with your own credit card, perhaps, to give your best protections, then do it. I mean, if you're buying a £1,500 coin, what's the point trying to save £3 by putting it on eBay with some random seller? None. None at all. When it arrives, thoroughly check the item, of course, if you've got your home testing remedies that you can do, non-destructive testing, then that's great. If you're at all unsure, contact the seller, initiate the returns, you've got that right, and do it properly with the correct postage, you know, special delivery, do your research on it. I know it's difficult and it's hard for other people to understand these things because, you know, for myself, I send, I literally send thousands of packages a year. So I know a lot about the postage system, I know a lot about the different types of postage and offer. And it's easier for me to say, that's what you need to do. If you've never sent something through the post that's precious metal, then it can be difficult, I get that. But research what is the right, have a look at the different T's and C's of these things and just go from there. So all in all, difficult, isn't it, to understand how in this day and age we can still have people losing money to fraudsters over on eBay, but it does happen. And if you wanna find out more in depth about this story about the full, uh, account of it then as I said there's a link in the description to the silver forum where you can see this thread uh, it's really frank really honest it's really good to see what other people's opinions are um, on this so head on down there now the second one is uh, an Instagram related scam attempt where um, I was actually trying to be involved by this uh, scammer so of one evening I was just chilling and I got an Instagram message from somebody and they sent me a photo of my sphere uh, copied from my Instagram page saying I'm very interested in this and I said well unfortunately this one is sold but you can buy another one on my website so they uh, they then you know asked me a few other questions like can it be customized can you put a name on it can you put a date on it and of course I can do any of those things and I was thinking yeah that's fine absolutely fine and then the alarm bell started to ring when the uh, prospective buyer then said to me um, I've been scammed before and I'm wary of buying from anybody online or some words to that effect and I was like yeah no fair enough okay like, well I get that people um, you know can be can be scammed that's that's I understand that that's what I'm thinking to myself my own internal monologue so I just simply write back going you know well I have a YouTube channel 40,000 subscribers I do this for a living here's my website here's all of my information uh, you know you can make of that what you will 
but he was still being really funny. You know, can I see a photo of the finished item before I pay? I'm like, well, no, because if I stamp your name on a big sphere like this, I can't sell it to anybody else unless somebody else with that name comes along. So it's like, no, you have to kind of pay pay for it first, or at least as I operate sometimes, a deposit first so that I know it's a real, real thing. And then it went quiet, nothing. And then about 20 minutes later, I had another message from somebody else that I've spoken to on Instagram before, a real person that's inquiring about things exactly like this. So whether that person's put up a, you know, a post about this and saying that they want to get it or they like it saying that this particular person had actually messaged them pretending to be the maker of this saying, Hey, look, how cool is this? I've made it. Do you want to buy it? Obvious scams. And it's happened so many times on Instagram. You get it so many times. Direct messaging of people to you to sell things is the biggest warning sign that you can get. Um, and you know, for me as the seller, as the person who was like sitting there just, you know, watching telly on my sofa, and then I get a message out the blue from somebody wanting to buy something. You know, that's, that's what happens sometimes. You get that, people see something they like on an Instagram post and then they wanna come and buy. And I'm like, you're worried about being scammed, but you're the one that messaged me. You know, if I was sending speculative messages out to thousands of people on Instagram, of course people would be a little bit more wary. But when you're the one that instigates the contact with somebody, you know, that's, I think, slightly different. But it's still worth being careful and understanding and do, again, doing the research looking about who you're buying from. If you are buying from social media like Instagram, you know, for me as a seller, one of the best things, the easiest things for me is you just go and order it on my website. My website does all of the checkout. Everything is in, you know, is in, given to you there in terms of details. You can put your address details, payments, process through the website. I don't have to really lift a finger to be quite frank. I can continue watching my TV program and just wait for you to place that order. But when you want to try and cut out PayPal and make banks transfers, I'm going to have to create invoice. I have to jump onto my PC, create invoices, send things out. And I'm happy to do that in the right circumstances. But again, that then leaves the buyer with less protection. So me being lazy and wanting to sit there on the telly, you know, watching the telly is fine for the buyer. That's in their interest. And yeah, it is difficult. So sometimes, again, it's worth paying a little bit more to have that protection if you're unsure of something. And if you're unsure of something, probably the best thing to do is just to step back and think about it for a few days or go and do some more research and work out what's right for you. And perhaps if that's what the original buyer of the fake gold coin on eBay would have done, they might not have been out of pocket for, I think they're about out of pocket for about hundred pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds now with a bit of um, extra money that's come back in from Royal Mail. They finally caved and gave him 50 pounds, which was what the original package was covered and various other little bits from PayPal. So yeah, scammers, be aware everyone. It's not a good thing out there. And of course I haven't even touched on things like the, um, you know, the, e sorry, not the eBay, the YouTube comments, scammers and spammers that are out there constantly. I, uh, I really, really am hot on getting rid of them, but they are there all the time. Don't engage with them. Like it's just not worth it. It's just not sensible. And people are just going to end up getting hurt and losing money. Um, but the sad fact of the matter is, is there's only one reason why these scammers continue to do what they do. And that's because sadly, some people fall for it. So the more that we can spread awareness of these kind of situations, hopefully the more they will fall off and realize that they're wasting their time and they're not going to get cash. But quite frankly, you know, there's some of these scammers will be making lots of money and all it takes is for one person to lose like a thousand pounds. And that's, you know, that's quite a lot of money for somebody to suddenly pocket. And it is quite scary. So be safe out there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and learned something from it. If you have experienced similar situations yourself, I'd love to know about them and hear about them down below in the comment section. And as I said, go and check out the Silver Forums thread on this whole topic because it is a fascinating read from beginning to end. Uh, and it's really good to see the community sharing thoughts and opinions on how to protect oneself in similar circumstances. So all of that is linked down below. Otherwise, a big thank you to you, the BYB Rambling Society, you cool kids that stay around to the end of a video. Say hello down in that comment section. It's always good to hear from you. And if you are a hardcore supporter of the channel and wanna have a look at how you can get supporting more, check out the memberships down below as well. Otherwise, that is it from me. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks as always, and have a great, great week.